the truth, Whitney. Do you think Mama would ever tell Ethan I love him? Check that song out. It must be new. Who cares about some song when my life's at stake here, Whitney? Your life got saved when Ethan didn't tell Frank or Ivy Crane that you're his stock. I am grateful that Ethan didn't turn me in, but what if Mama slips and tells Ethan I caused all those freak accidents because I love him? He'd laugh at me. I couldn't bear that. I mean it, Whitney. I'd die if Mama told Ethan I loved him. Tell me, Pilar, why do you think your daughter was accident-prone only around me? That's a difficult question to answer, Ethan. Frankly, I'm not completely convinced that they were all accidents. And one or two times, all right. I would call it bad luck, coincidence, whatever. But I was attacked five or six times. I know. I know it I mean, looks There has bad. to be a reasonable explanation. Teresa didn't just bump into me. One thing I've learned about you all the years that you've worked for this family is that you always tell the truth, Pilar. If you know the truth, tell me. Why did Teresa do all those things to me? Please let this music Kay brought help Charity remember me. That tape you made for Charity is an all-time low, even for you, Kay. How could you do this to your own cousin? Look, Simone, it's either me or Charity. Only one of us is gonna wind up with Miguel. All I'm doing is making sure that it's me. Charity. You don't like Miguel. Stay away from him. Stay away. What do you think Miguel would say if he knew what you put on that tape? He can't. He'd hate me forever. Guess what? Touch that dial and you're a dead man. I would hold the hand of the one who could lead me places And kiss the lips of the one who could sing so sweet And I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew would take me Pilar, you're not answering my question. If she wasn't stalking me, what was she doing? I'm not certain I understand. What made her cause all those accidents? Why did they only happen when she was around me? I cannot say accidents happen. They can't always be explained. I suppose. But I still get the feeling that you're not telling me everything you know, Pilar. Oh, <laughs> let me help you with those, Mother. With your bad ankle, don't you dare. Pilar can help me. Thank you, Pilar. Oh, my goodness. Well, Gwen went home. Straight from town. She said she'd call you later. Mm. Is something wrong? No, Pilar and I were just having a little talk. Oh. It must have been very upsetting to have Mr. Lomax accuse your daughter of being Ethan Stalker. I am just so sorry the whole thing happened, Mrs. Crane. <laughs> Believe me, we all are. Clearly, Frank overstepped his bounds and let his zeal for an arrest overcome his common sense. Oh, please, do not blame Mr. Lomax for what happened to Teresa today. He's a good detective. I would feel terrible if you would have held anything against him. <laughs> Pilar, if it had been left up to him, he would have dragged your daughter off to jail when she is completely innocent. If I were you, I'd be furious with him. I'm just so upset that uh, my family has cost you any trouble. If you'll both excuse me, I've got work to do. Of course, Pilar. Thank you again, Ethan. What was that about? What's that? Why was she thanking you? You know, your mother has excellent radar. Something's up. What is it?
No. She couldn't. Mama knows it would kill me if she told Ethan I loved him. But what if Ethan asks your mother point blank? You know she couldn't lie to save her life. Well, true. But she loves her kids. She wouldn't hurt me by giving me away to Ethan. Not that it would make any difference. How can you say that? I told you, Whitney. Ethan made it very clear that he never wants anything to do with me ever again. No, you don't understand. I don't want to run into you outside of my house. I want your word that if you see me on the streets or in a restaurant, you will run, not walk, as far away from me as you can. My dream about Ethan is just that. A dream. Some dreams can seem pretty real, I guess. I swear, Whitney, as long as I live, I'll never want another man again. It was either Ethan or no one. Men are definitely more trouble than they're worth. Whitney, Russell, how can you possibly mean that? Frank's the only guy you've ever liked. You'll fall for dozens more. No way. You'll see. There's no putting that genie back in the bottle. What genie? The passion genie, Whitney. It's out. Get used to it. Forget it, Teresa. After what happened with Frank, I have had it with the entire male gender. No, you haven't. Yes, I have. Frank called me a liar. Nobody's ever called me a liar before in my entire life. It felt awful. The only reason why it hurts so much, Whitney, is because Frank stirred up some strong feelings in you. Are you telling me you never want to feel that way about someone again? What's the problem, Chad? Don't you mean, what's the problem this time, Chad? Your words, not mine. But I hope you remember my rule about leaving your attitude outside the door before you walk in here. I'm sorry, Henry. I didn't mean to jump on you. Sit down. Tell me what happened. When that happened, that song... It's nice. It's mine. It's my ideas, my singers, my long, hard hours of work. Hey, it's gonna be a hit. And it was gonna be my ticket to real life. What happened? <laughs> my low-down line dog of a boss stiffed me. <laughs> he promised me cover credit as assistant producer and he didn't come through. But that song wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for me. Listen to it, Henry. Huh? It's good. It's great, is what it is. I mean, I'm more proud of this than anything I ever did in my life. So what did you do? I already told you. I worked my tail off trying to put this thing together. No, no. I mean, what did you do when you found out that your boss wasn't going to give you credit? Don't walk out when I'm talking to you. I will do whatever the hell I please. You didn't even want to make this album in the first place. Easy, man. I had to talk you into it. And I worked for weeks with the talent while you were stoned out your mind on drugs. Shut the hell up! Son of a... I laid the dude out. Let me guess what happened next. He fired you. Man, I didn't want his lousy job to begin with. Sure you did, Chad. That's why I worked so hard to help you get it, remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now the creep's saying that he's gonna make sure I never get into the music business again. Oh, not cool, Chad. Not cool at all. Yeah, but the jerk had it coming. Lots of jerks have it coming. But when they're the people that are signing your paychecks, you kind of stifle that impulse. Hey, look, I got an idiot for a boss, too. But, but I got a wife and kids to feed. I can't afford to just pop somebody in the nose just because they deserve it. Well, since I already blew it by giving the creep a little nosebleed, I might as well just go back and show him what I really think of him. Stay away from Miguel. Stay away. Stay away. Oh, no. What if Miguel hears what's on that tape? That was a close one. This is evil, Kay. Charity's your cousin. She almost died in a fire that probably killed her mother. Besides your family, she doesn't have anyone else in the world. Except Miguel. And you want to tear them apart. Do you have any conscience at all? 
Miguel is rightfully mine. Miguel's not yours, Kay. He's more mine than hers. Charity's only known him for a few weeks. I've known him for years. She should find someone else. I don't think she wants anyone but Miguel. Well, that's just tough, because I'm not letting anyone come between me and Miguel, not even my bratty little sister Jessica, who'd do anything to mess me up. Wouldn't Jessica just love to hear what's on that tape so she could tell Miguel? Don't worry, Kay, I'm not gonna tell her. Of course you're not. You're my best friend. Hey, do you wanna go to the cafeteria and get some ice cream? Why not? Anything's better than watching your twisted schemes in action. Maybe by the time we get back, Charity will have woken up and told Miguel she never wants to see him again. Hi, Miguel. How's Charity doing? Hey, Jessica. She's asleep right now. Oh, yeah? So what's with the headphones? I don't care what you say, Teresa. I'm stuffing that passion genie right back in the bottle. Easier said than done. Maybe for you, Teresa. But I've got a passion for something else. Tennis. I've worked too long and too hard to let some guy get in the way of that. Even Frank? Especially Frank. If I hadn't let my feelings for him get out of hand, I wouldn't feel so bad about him saying that he never wanted to see me again. You'll see, Whitney. You'll think about some other cute boy in no time. No, not me. But I know it's gotta be harder for you, Teresa. You've been thinking about Ethan a lot longer than I've been thinking about Frank. And I was crazy to, to think that Ethan would fall in love with me and, and I'd be his wife and we'd live happily ever after in the Crane Mansion. Don't be so hard on yourself, Teresa. You just dream big. It was a billion to one shot and you went for it. You're like a fool. Like someone that's not afraid to try anything. I mean it, Teresa. If there was any girl in this town that could go from living in a little house on Railroad Street to being the mistress of the Crane Mansion, it would be you. You think so? Absolutely. You're gonna make your mark in this world. It just won't be as a crane. Oh, Ethan. It's time you got your radar checked, Mother. Nobody's keeping anything from you. Then why do I get the feeling that you and Pilar were talking about something serious when I walked in? Pilar was thanking me for some help I gave her. Legal. I know her husband disappeared several years ago, and she's tried many times to find out what happened to him. Did it have something to do with that? It was about helping her with a relative. Oh, I see. I understand. Lawyer, client, confidentiality. <laughs> well, I'm just glad you could help Pilar. You're a really special person, Ethan, and you have such a good heart. And I see you have lots of work to do. <laughs> if I have a good heart, Mother, it's because I inherited it from you. Well, I really wish things would have worked out today. I'm really gonna miss Teresa. If you only knew her, Mother. What if it was a mistake? Maybe I shouldn't have let her off the hook. Stay away from Miguel. Charity's listening to some music. Cool. She must be feeling better then. Sort of. She drifts in and out, but I think she's coming around. She remembered the fire, and she asked about her mother. Does she know? No. We didn't tell her about her mom. The thing that bothers me the most is that so far, she doesn't recognize people. Well, she's met so many people all at once in Harmony, and, and then the fire. It's no wonder she can't remember who's who. She doesn't even remember meeting anyone. Except you, of course. No, not even me. Not yet, anyway. Oh, that's awful. Maybe she's in one of those shock states that happen to people who've been through something terrible. For a while, they can't remember anything, but then bits and pieces start to come back. 
That's what I'm hoping. And that by listening to this music while she sleeps, it'll calm her down enough that she'll start to remember. Great idea, Miguel. I can't take the credit. Your sister Kay came up with it. <laughs> Kay? All it would get you is thrown into jail. Well, so what am I gonna do? I mean, that job was my, was my shot. I did everything you're supposed to do to try to make good. And look what it got me. I know it hurts being broke again. I mean, it ain't about the bucks. I mean, I didn't do it to ask for a cut of the profits. All I wanted was a little name credit. I wanted people to know that for the first time in my life, Chad Harris did something good, something to be proud of. And I did it myself, without no fancy education, no uh, string pulling, or having anybody make my way for me. No, I did it myself. My brains, my heart. I know. I mean, Henry, you went to college. I mean, tell me how it works that, that there are people out there with no talent at all who get to run the show, get all the credit, make all the money. I thought you weren't worried about the money. Hey, man, I ain't gonna turn it down if it comes my way. That's a laugh. Like me and success is ever gonna meet up. Ah, oh, you don't know that. Oh, yeah? But look, Chad, I know that life is not always fair. But I also believe that in the long run, uh, the good people, the people with the real heart and real talent, they win out. That's right, Henry, but it ain't gonna work this time. I know you've had a hard time of it. At the same time, go, go play no violins for me now. I'm a survivor, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, I remember. I remember when they first brought you in here. Scared, skinny little eight-year-old kid. I wasn't scared. Oh, yeah, that's what you said that day, too. But your eyes gave you away. They were big as saucers. You were looking all around, trying to figure out what the heck life was going to throw at you next. I don't remember all that much from when I was a kid. Probably wanted to forget. I don't blame you. I remember how I got here, though. <laughs> I ran away from home for a couple days. And when I got back to my apartment, my family was gone. <laughs> whole new family was living there. Didn't have no idea where my folks had gone. I remember. Things didn't seem to work out too good after that. Every one of those foster homes was like a bad dream. I'm not sure it was always the foster home's fault, Chad. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. My bad temper kept getting me kicked out. You're a good kid. But you can't let your past keep stepping on your future. What future? Where am I gonna go? I got no family, no job, and nobody cares what happens to me. It was my sister's idea for Charity to listen to music while she's asleep. Yeah, isn't that sweet? Kay's been so great through all this. What's so funny? You know how Jessica is always finding some way to keep Miguel and Charity together? Well, I finally come up with the perfect scheme that she won't figure out to keep them apart. Hey, sis. Simone. Hey, Jessica. There's your favorite in the cafeteria, Miguel. Butter crunch. Oh, thanks, Kay. I told you your sister's been a doll. I mean, with all that's going on, She's always thinking of someone else. <laughs> oh, yeah. My sister's one of a kind. Simone, can I see you outside for a minute? About what? This is private, Kay. Level with me, Simone. What's my demon sister up to this time? Who, who said she was up to anything? Kay never does anything without a reason, especially when it involves her arch rival, Charity. Well? My lips are sealed, Jessica. I'm not gonna write out my best friend. That clenches it. She's definitely up to no good. It's gotta be about breaking up Miguel and Charity, but what's her angle this time? <laughs> if, if you won't help me, I'll figure it out myself.
What's going on? You tell me, big sister. I don't know what you're talking about. Whatever it is, it's not gonna work. Nothing you can do can keep Miguel and Charity apart. I'll make sure of it. <laughs> I care about you, Chad. I do. Now, come on, let's see if I can help you find another job. You mean in the music business? Uh, that might be a little hard. I mean, it was hard enough getting you hired in the first place, but now that you got the head of one of the biggest music studios in L.A. against you... So what do you think I could get? Okay. I have a friend who works down at the L.A. County Hospital. Now, he's always looking to hire bright young guys like you. You mean guys who can't get nothing but changing bedpans for minimum wage? I mean, come on, Henry. Forget that. I, mean, I know somebody's got to do it, but it ain't going to be me. It's a job, It's Chad. a dead-end job. If jokes of the world can keep knocking me down, I'm going to keep getting up. So what? I ain't got no money. I still got my dreams, and no one's taking them away. It's either the music business or nothing for me. I don't know whether to give you a reality check or, or to tell you how much I admire you. I, I think I'll take the second one. <laughs> yeah, I do admire you, Chad. You got guts. Determination. Who knows? Hey, you just might make it. Thanks. Uh, don't you know anybody that can help you out right now? Not really. I mostly keep to myself. Yeah, it's too bad we can't track down your family. What good would that do? <laughs> they even want me when I was a cute little eight-year-old. <laughs> what they gonna want with an unemployed dropout? <laughs> Forget it, man. They may have abandoned you, but they're still your family, and they're out there somewhere. Well, I ain't never gonna look for them. <sighs> Not like they want me to, anyway. I mean, when they, when they split, they sure didn't leave no maps on where I could find them. You know, actually, they might have. <sighs> Harmony is not big enough for us to walk off what happened today. Wherever we go, it reminds me of Ethan. When we went by the harbor just now, it reminded me of the Harmony Hunk contest and rubbing that heat liniment on Ethan's back by accident. I practically scarred him for life. Forget it, Teresa. Ethan's fine now. Look where we are now. Right where I spilled those milkshakes all over Ethan. You're an accident waiting to happen. I'm out of here. No, wait! Why can't there be do-overs in life? I'd give anything if I could take back all those stupid things I've done to Ethan. If they hadn't happened, I might be in his arms right now. You cannot do this to yourself, Teresa. You're making yourself feel worse than you already do. You see the way Josh is looking at you? I think he definitely has a crush on you. I don't care. I'll never be another Ethan. I'd better call my mom at the Cranes. Make sure nothing's happened to her because of me. Crane residence. It's me, Mama. Teresa, where are you? I'm with Whitney at the chicken coop. What happened after I left? If you're worried about Ethan telling anyone that you really were his stalker, you can relax. I'm sure he will not say a word. What did he say to you, Mama? He wanted to know why you only seem to have accidents around him. You didn't tell him I was in love with him, did you, Mama? No, of 
course not. Oh, thank you, Mama. Teresa, the time has come for you to forget the cranes and get on with your life. You understand that now, don't you? Yes, Mama. I'll see you later then. Going to get on with my life without Ethan. Can we share this job? Where's that report? Oh, I know what you mean. I can't find anything today. Teresa was here only a short time, but she had my life completely organized. Yeah, I know you like her mother. Oh, it was more than that. Teresa knew where everything was. There were no slip-ups, no missed appointments, no unanswered letters. I still don't know why she had to resign. I mean, it was a great opportunity for her, and Lord knows her family could use the paycheck. Why don't you just give Pilar a raise? She certainly deserves it. Oh, yes. Pilar is a godsend. And I have tried many times to help her out with something extra, but the woman is just too proud to accept anything she considers a handout. Sounds like Pilar. So she'd help me figure out how to get her daughter back. Forget Teresa. She's not coming back to work in this house. You sound like you have something against her, Ethan. What is it? What do you think you're going to find in there? I seem to remember an old notation in your file. Something about an item found in the apartment when your parents vacated. Uh, here it is. Well, what does it say they left behind? Okay. Wait, don't tell them. Um, uh, a sack of garbage, right? Uh, an empty beer bottle. Well, it doesn't say, but whatever it is, it belongs to you. It's downstairs in the storage room. Well, whatever my family left for me has got to be junk. So you don't even want to look? Why not? It's not like I got to be anywhere. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe the key to your whole future is just sitting down there waiting for you to lay claim to it. Yeah, right. Get real, Henry. Your mother's right, Teresa. You have to forget about Ethan. Put him out of your mind for good. But, but nothing, Teresa. You are not a crane. You're not a part of their life, and you never will be. You are a Lopez Fitzgerald. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. That is a great thing to be. It's time that you accepted that. You're right, Whitney. I won't need these fashion and society magazines anymore. <laughs> Goodbye, dreams. I really didn't care all that much about the fancy jewelry or the money. It was more about a certain kind of life, you know, where you have candles on the dinner table every night and a white linen tablecloth set with beautiful crystal and silverware. And Ethan there with me. Well, at least part of my dream came true. You mean being Ivy Crane's secretary? I was great at it, Whitney. I was made for that job. This isn't helping. Now I understand. My mama loves her job with the cranes. Why she doesn't mind taking the bus in the cold of winter or the heat of summer. I would have walked through the fires of hell myself if I could have kept working at the crane mansion. Why did I have to mess it all up? I can't talk about this right now, Mother. I can't find the report Teresa typed up for me. It's not here, it's not in my computer, it's not anywhere. Well, maybe you should just call her. Yeah, I don't think so. Pilar. Yes, e Mrs. Crane. Ethan has something to ask you. I need to speak to Teresa. I can't find the report she typed up for me. Is she at home? Uh, no, she's not. I just spoke to her. She's with her friend Whitney at that new chicken restaurant by the harbor. 
Well, I have to track her down. I need this report for my board meeting. Well, but she could be gone by now. It's worth a shot, Pallone. You shouldn't be walking all around town with your bad ankle, Ethan. The exercise will do it good. Besides, it's feeling much better, Mother. Oh, all right. But if you find Teresa, would you ask her to give me a call? I need to ask her about a dress she ordered for me. I'll tell her. Oh, Pilar. Isn't there anything I can say to convince Teresa to come back and work here part-time after school? Oh, no, Mrs. Crane. That wouldn't work out at all. I don't want any part of you two crazy sisters right now. You work it out yourselves. You've got it all wrong, Jessica. Like you wouldn't try anything to keep Miguel and Charity apart? Keep your voice down. That was before the fire. I've moved on from all those petty, immature schemes I used to pull. Right. Don't believe me. But Charity's our cousin, and she's in trouble. Look at her lying in there, almost like a vegetable. Breaks my heart. When did you get a heart? I don't care what you think about me, Jessica. I know I've changed, and that's all that matters. Tells me to think what it's gonna be like for Charity when she wakes up and finds out that her mom's body is missing and she's probably an orphan. She's gonna feel really awful. She's gonna need all the love and support she can get. I know I'll be there for her. We'll welcome her into our home and our hearts. Then you've really given up the idea of stealing Miguel away from Charity? As God is my witness. <laughs> Man, this is a waste of time. If it was worth anything, they would not have left it behind when they skipped out on the rent. And me. Well, you don't know that. I'm telling you, the way they head onto that yellow box, you would have thought the winning lottery ticket was in it. See if there's a yellow shoebox. What? I don't know. I just remember something about a yellow shoebox or so on. Here it is. You were right. Well, Chad, it's yours. You do the honors. <laughs> I knew it. Jump. What kind of family leaves a kid a raggedy old yellow shoebox full of unpaid bills and a, a scrap of a newspaper for an inheritance, man? <laughs> man, I'm out of here. Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. There's something about this. Stop beating yourself up, Teresa. It's not like you messed things up on purpose. But if I hadn't been so accident prone around you, then none of this would have happened. No one would have thought I was a stalker. I wouldn't have had to wear this disguise around Ethan. He could have seen me for who I really am. If only I hadn't caused those stupid accidents. I don't blame Ethan for thinking I'm some kind of terrorist. You can't do this to yourself, Teresa. What's done is done. You can't do anything about it. I just hope I never run into Ethan again. I couldn't face him. The cranes are so perfect. No wonder he can't understand how someone could screw things up like I did. <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding, Kate? Nothing could make you give up the idea of wanting Miguel. You don't know me at all, Jessica. Oh, really? 
You aren't the same Kay that didn't tell our mom that Charity was probably her niece, even though you knew she had been searching for her family for 20 years? Oh, shut up already. So I did some crazy things in the past. I'm over that. Besides, what could I possibly do to poor Charity now? That's what I'm going to find out. Has she guessed about the tape? No. She's not going to either. I think I've outsmarted her. So, what's the music on the tape, Miguel? I don't know. Kay said mostly new stuff. You mean you haven't listened to it? No. When Kay brought it in, she put the headphones right on Charity. Stay away, Miguel. Mind if I listen, Miguel? So it's a scrap of a newspaper from a place I never heard of. Big deal. Harmony's a small seaside town in the Northeast. Hey, look over here. Somebody's got your name on the corner. Well, who did that? You folks from Harmony originally? No, they said they were always from L.A. Could mean something. You what? A piece of a newspaper from the other side of the country with my name on it? Yeah, just throw this mess away. Hey, hold on, Chad. I mean, you know, it could be important. Stop making yourself sick, Teresa. I mean, you'll probably never even run into Ethan again. Well, I better not, because if I do and there's another accident, I'm going straight to jail. Teresa. Ethan? <gasps> sure, you can listen to the tape. I'm kind of curious myself what songs Kate picked. Me too. What are you guys doing? We were just going to listen to the tape you made for charity. Oh, I can do better than that. I can um, lend you the CDs I made the tapes from, and then you can listen to the whole track. <laughs> but that would take too long. I want to hear what's on there now. Don't you, Miguel? Sure. Stay away from Miguel. Stay away. Stay away. 